worked correctly, we should be live. So that's exciting. Uh, welcome everyone to the virtual book release party for There Will Be Peace When You Are Done, which is the new book from Supernatural cast and fans about how the show has inspired them, impacted them, and the legacy it will leave behind. As you can see, we already have some wonderful actors who have joined us for this first hour of the book release party. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Lynn because she is the editor of the book. Hi, everybody. I am so glad that everybody could join us who's joining in. We've got a lot of our contributors tonight. Um, so basically what we're going to do is I'm going to have a couple of questions for each of them about uh, writing their chapters in the book, maybe about the character they played on Supernatural. Um, and then basically we're, we're just going to have fun. Um, I would like to say that we have two wonderful interpreters here for us, Robin and Spring. So we're all going to try really hard not to talk over each other and to talk one at a time, which doesn't always happen on Zoom. Um, but we're going to try really hard to do that. Um, Alana is our tech guru, so she is going to keep things going smoothly here on her YouTube channel. And my other co-host is Kim Pryor, who coordinated all of the beautiful photos and artwork in the book. So she's going to have some questions too at some point. So we're going to go one at a time and we've got our list here. So Shoshana, you are up first. So my question for everyone is to tell us a little bit about what it was like writing your chapter for the book. And also for Shoshana, I'm wondering when you wrote your chapter, Eileen had not come back to Supernatural yet. So she was still dead until the very, very last draft of your chapter. Um, so I'm wondering, did the characters return to the show change your feelings at all? about her death or her journey in any way? Uh, I th think writing the chapter really helped me to process her death. And I'm not sure if my feelings changed. She's still dead and she still had that experience. It's not like it's been erased. It's not a fake storyline it actually did occur she did die but she just came back after that so what was the experience like writing this chapter because you've written a lot you've written for this close and other things but this was different Okay, let's see. Oh, it was definitely different writing for this, Lynn. There was, was more of an internal voice for myself where writing this close is uh, including dialogue based on external factors. And writing for other characters is definitely an expansion of my external voice process. But I think that uh, with Eileen and writing for the SPN, it was a very different experience. And I was actually very grateful for that opportunity because it really did impact my life and being able to write in that voice. And so I do appreciate that. And I think it's an important part of my life. Oh, I love that. And, and I love that is such an important character to so many people. And I was just over the moon after you already had your chapter done to see her come back to the show because when you were writing it, that's kind of what we were hoping for. But I don't think either of us really knew that that was gonna happen. So I am, I am so happy that that happened. Yeah, I, I think it was shocking and everybody found that out and the story of, one moment for the interpreter please. How I actually found out was through Comic-Con 
And there was a panel that I was in and I had saw, saw the writer, Bob Sears, and he, he said, I'm like, hey, you're, you're that guy, but I haven't met you yet. And he's like, oh yeah. And he said, so you're coming back, hey? And I said, really? Are you serious? I'm coming back? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so that's how I found out. I love, I love the way things like that sometimes do happen on Supernatural. That's not the first time I've heard a story like that, but I didn't know that. That is, that is awesome. Yeah, I didn't expect it. <laughs> and uh, it was a very organic how it happened. And the show really has that connection with people and it doesn't matter how, if you've met them before or not, or if you see anyone, you see them in person, you kind of already feel like you know each other. It's a very unique experience and network. And it's really beautiful and special. Yeah, so, so agreed. I'm, I'm like so like emotional with all of you here in this virtual room because I feel a connection to all of the characters that you've played. So it's so wonderful to have you all in this room together. And I know many of you have never met each other. So this is, this is really awesome having you all here at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Shoshana. Also, your daughter is adorable. And thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she might show up again, so. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so next up on my list is Andrea Drapal, who's joined us. Hi, Andrea. Hi. Hi, everyone. So happy to have you here. Yes, I'm happy to be here. How Can fun you... is this? I know. This is so much <laughs> family at one time, at one place. It's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Andrea, for those of you who haven't read her chapter yet, played Melanie the werewolf in season 14, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, yep. Gabe Tigerman also upstaging people with adorable child there. Adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, can you tell us a little bit about writing your chapter and why you wanted to write about what you did? Yes. Well, I mean, I suppose it's always been a dream of mine to sort of become a published author. Um, and yeah, it just so happened that this opportunity came up to, to do some writing. So I wanted to take the opportunity. What, it felt like very kismet when you sort of said, this is what we kind of want to talk about. You know, um, but I wanted to write something very meaningful and then that would like have reach to, to like the people out there just um, because the role was so close to my heart and it just like the timing of everything else in my life that had happened. I wanted to just honor that and just take the opportunity to really speak to the hearts of, of you know, the fans and, and, and the people out there. Right. So I think that was sort of my motivation and just to be really right with an honest heart and and hopefully touch some people and have them, you know, respond to 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 the to the story, to my story and, and to see that we're all kind of connected. You know, it's it's we we come from so many different backgrounds and and ethnicities and cultures and everything. But, but, you know, I think, especially in the last couple of months, if anything's taught, we're all in it together. It doesn't matter. Right. So For I think sure. that was sort of the spirit of like why I wrote the chapter in the way that I did. I love it. And you wrote about that not enough syndrome. Do you feel like you've yeah. made progress in like overcoming that? You know, every time I think that I've made progress in the not enough syndrome, um, I find that it manifests itself somewhere else. So it's like, if it's not in the not in, like I'm not enough as a, as a woman, or it might manifest as I'm not enough as an actor, or it might manifest itself as, you know, I'm not doing enough. I'm not trying hard enough. Um, and so I think, am I making progress? Yes, I do think I am making progress. Um, but I think that self-compassion and acceptance is just going to be an ongoing, um, you know, thing 
for me and and that's okay you know that's okay so it's okay to not be okay and oh he wanted to come say hi uh more this is my more dog. cuteness more cuteness <laughs> feeling this the is joke. Winston oh <laughs> so um so yeah I I think yes I'm making progress you know and then sometimes I feel like I've taken 14 steps backwards you know I think that's just the most honest response I can I can give right now. I, I can you know? I can totally relate and I think probably a lot of people can totally relate. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And thank you for your beautiful chapter. Oh, uh, thank you. Who's up next? I'm trying to go in order of my list. Uh Julie. Julie McNiven, who played Anna, as I'm sure you all probably know. Um can you tell us a little bit about why you chose to write your chapter about what you wrote about? Um well uh, for me, it happened very organically, I think, with our exchanges. Um, when I started to write, I literally had no idea what I was going to write about, really. I just started writing, and uh, within a one or two email exchanges with you, it was like, oh, okay. And it, you know, it, it for me, it was finding a voice, finding a home, um, using my voice, which I think I've I've graduated too, so that's good. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it didn't, you know, I, I said I'd do it and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna write. And I just sat down and, <laughs> and wrote because, you know, I think all of us have so much emo uh, emotion and life tied into our experience with Supernatural, whether it be, you know, only doing a couple episodes and then traveling the world with everyone. I mean, there's so many life experiences that have, you know, there's weddings we've gone to, there's baby showers, there's, I mean, there's just a lot of life. Um, so there's always something to write about, but I didn't have any plans when I started. I love the way it came together. And I love you write about how working on Supernatural sort of helped you find your voice. And also, especially in that scene with Jensen, kind of yeah. take control over how your body was filmed, which I think was really yeah. important too. I mean, I think that would, that was a huge, when I think about um, how I handle myself on set, if I'm in um, any sort of sex scene or love scene now, um, it really stems from, and it sounds it sounds in, in a way it's like Jensen invited me to have a voice. So, uh, you know, when you're not a series regular and you don't get jobs every other day, um, you don't want to be any trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think as a female, you can get really stuck in that place. And I was there for many years. My stories, I don't know how I got myself into some of these situations, but I was there uh, in my early 20s, um, I just didn't want to be trouble. Just want to be easy. Just go with the flow. You know, I'm easy. I'm easy going. I can, I can kind of be what you need me to be, which is nice for you know for some things, but um, it it caused some issues in other things. So um, so it was that moment where he was like, well, let's turn the the monitor around. You can see, and you, you know. You, you do what you need to do. He was like, he was, I, I just had never thought I could do that because like I was young and I didn't want to be trouble. You know, I just wanted to do my job. Yeah, he gave you permission to sort yeah. of, yeah, speak up and, and to have yeah. your voice. Yeah. I love, I love that story. I love your chapter. It really, it really did come together. Thank you so much for it. Thank you. I loved, I loved the button of the light at the end. That was, yeah tied in so nicely when you have a good editor you're like oh great i don't have to think of everything <laughs> you you thought of most of it though it was, it was very well done well thank you um all right who's up next oh gabe tigerman who is now outside um do you want to talk a little bit about your chapter is one of the ones that's a little different because we did it interview style so do you want to uh, talk a little bit about that? And then, I don't know, maybe you want to tell the actual six-legged steer, steer story for oh, us. Oh, God. <laughs> that, to, but if you want to, I just love it. I will, you know, I, I'll oblige. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm outside because uh, my internet connection elsewhere was uh, terrible. Um, 
So I was a little, it was, it was a little daunting to write uh, for this because every time I sat down to do it, um, I, I don't know, it's been, Supernatural is a pretty unique experience. I, I think I'm probably not alone in saying that in, there's a lot of feelings attached to it. And I found myself pretty overwhelmed at the idea, at the scope of what there was to even talk about. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I shot Supernatural over 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, my wife and I, I think I mentioned this in the inter interview style of, of it, you know, my wife and I had just met uh, and so much has happened since then. And then there's been so much connection through all of the conventions, which is such a incredibly unique experience to have with a, a job you know it's become so so much more and there's so many relationships and it was I, I kept kind of not knowing where to start um and so then I kept blowing you off uh and <laughs> repeatedly um and until we finally figured out it was just like hey uh, send me some questions like focus me I, I'm you know, I do like to write, but I also do like to improvise. And a great thing about improvising is, is just that, you know, that uh, suggestion from the audience or that launching off point. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's kind of how we started. And you started throwing out some questions for me to, to, to answer. And then it worked completely smoothly as soon as we started doing it that way. Yeah, then it was fun and I was a little, it was less daunting and, uh, but I did find myself, I don't know about it, if anybody else had this where I was, uh, it was hard not to get, not that there's anything wrong with being sappy about something that's significant, but it was hard not for each question just to be like, like to talk about how significant this all was you know like i really mark so many uh kind of big life experiences through supernatural and through the conventions and through the relationships with uh, a lot of people uh even on this zoom and uh and and not here and uh you know it was uh it i knew how important supernatural was but uh really sitting down to answer questions about it uh really put it into focus yeah, yeah. Well, I love the way your chapter came out, but I oh. do really want you to tell the six-legged series. You don't have to tell the long version, but just <laughs> the middle of it, Gabe. Has everyone, or has no one heard? Has everyone in the Zoom heard this story? I it's doubt it. Okay, there's some people who haven't. Oh, good. Um, I, I don't, does any, do you remember how this even came up at all? It's literally nothing to do with supernatural which is kind of my favorite part of the the q and a's or that, that we would do is that you just go off on tangents upon tangents upon tangents especially if chad was there um hey buddy uh and uh, yeah <laughs> um where you, you didn't even know how you got to uh, to this particular story uh, of or something incredibly self-revealing that you never intended on discussing. And this is just a really um, absurd true story uh, about when I was 18 years old and driving cross country to go get to college uh, from LA to New York and uh let's just let's in this in this uh, zoom about supernatural here's a story about uh seeing a five and a six-legged steer in kansas uh as i'm sure we all assumed we'd be discussing um and so i was driving with my friends uh in a really old uh, volvo station wagon uh across kansas and it was early in the morning because my friends would always make me drive uh while they slept and it's just I don't know if you've been to Kansas, it's just flat for hours and hours and hours. And so I was doing that and driving then I saw a sign, a literal sign uh, that, that said, uh, world's largest groundhog, 12 miles. And I said, huh. And then I kept driving and then it said world's largest groundhog, 10 miles. And I thought, hmm. And then it said, like, like, oh, if we, if you weren't sold on this, uh, the, uh, a also home to the five and six-legged steer, five miles. 
and I thought, I'm in, I'm sold. I don't care what anybody says, here we go. And I pulled off and we got to, uh, I guess the, a, what's known as a tourist trap in the Prairie Dog City, Kansas. And, uh, and we go in, we pay our $5 each and it's just dirt and like pigeons in cages and uh and then and then i don't see the world's largest groundhog and so i asked the guy who runs it i said where's the world's largest groundhog and uh he said uh i'm like i don't see it he said well i didn't say it was live now did i and i said i guess you didn't i didn't you're not wrong uh and so now but like i still i paid five dollars i want to see it uh he's like it's out in the back i'm like of course it is that's where you keep that and i'm picturing a dead groundhog i guess and just like and like it maybe like a picture like the size of a dog and like in a field and there's flies and uh that's what i'm picturing and but i'm gonna see it because you know five dollars is five dollars and back then this is 1998 you know that's like a billion dollars i'm not good at math uh and so is this going on too long are we, are we okay. wrap it up wrap it up get oh, to the steer right. so we get it i, I see it so we got the steer and so uh, anyway i i see uh a statue of a 20 foot uh tall groundhog and i'm like good great my friend writes this sucks on the back of it in sharpie and i'm like hey is the is the steer are the steers dead too he's like no no they're quite alive i'm like great Let's see those. And I'm thinking optimistically, they must be like great. And like all the legs reach the ground and they're like super fast, advanced steers. They're not. That one's got a, I'm looking forward to the sign language for this. Uh, one's got uh, its fifth leg growing out of its shoulder and it just goes over the top of its head kind of like this. And the other has two legs that go out the back like it's giving birth to but it stopped um it's upsetting and it's against god's will and uh and so i said to my friends like we got to take a picture and we've got a disposable camera because that's how old i am and they i'm like get close you got to get both the steers in the picture closer closer um oh no run run five leggy ran at the side at the at the side of the cage and flung swear to jesus christ lord, our lord and savior its fifth leg and flap <laughs> my friend gideon right in like the face neck and shoulder area uh and he screamed and dr like ran to the car and that's amazing sign language and took like a silkwood shower in a in a dq uh a bathroom and hasn't been right since oh and my that god it's my supernatural story I, I i can't help it i love that story so much it, it's i'm glad chad it's like your millionth time hearing it i know um, i don't care it's like simultaneously <laughs> horrifying and hilarious at the same time and check my Twitter, you can see I found, you know, during the quarantine, I've been digging through old photos and I found the disposable camera photo of the five and six legged steer. And if you zoom in, this is zoom in. I, I just did it for you, zoom in. Uh, uh, you can see the, the upsettingness. Yeah, I was traumatized when I saw your picture. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> saying goodbye to Andrea DePaul, who has to leave. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, everyone. Have so much fun. Thank you for having me. Can Thank I switch to me, everybody? Yes. Bye, everyone. So next up is Lauren Tom. I don't know how you follow the six-legged steer story, yeah, Lauren, so don't, don't try. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you for that. So can you tell us a little bit about writing your chapter and what you wanted to write about? Well, you know, it's that saying of, I hate writing, but I always love having written. So it was kind of like, I was really um, had some resistance to it just because of that whole professionistic thing going on about feeling like my grammar isn't good enough. And 
didn't know if I had an interesting enough story, but I'm glad that you were persistent, Lynn. And um, I just kind of felt like maybe I should start with, you know, trying to write something that would be of interest to um, supernatural fan readers. Um, and I feel like, you know, what connects all of us is that, you know, the people in the cast I've found and, and just the, the family, the supernatural family, we all kind of feel a bit like misfits and outsiders and uh you know I, that's something i've related to my whole life and just you know being you know a person of color and and growing up in a town where there was no one else that looked remotely like me so i thought i would start from there because i felt like at the end of the day all of us what we really want is just to feel like we belong somewhere and uh, and i feel like that's the beauty of the supernatural fandom is that people um, really have an experience and a feeling of that. And, and it's been such a beautiful gift to me to feel connected to this group of people and um, to just be blown away by the kindness and the generosity that I've experienced. If it wasn't for Osric, you know, um, because he kept trying to pull me into social media because I hadn't been, you know, I'm a million years old. I don't know how to like do anything technical and he taught me how to do Twitter and, and Instagram and create an account and literally pulled me into the dance when the Hollywood show was during their Shake It Off video. So I felt like he really, I'm, I'm very grateful to him to, for pulling me into that. Um, he, he really does feel like, you know, my third son because I have two sons in real life. So um, yeah, so I, I found that it was actually a lot of fun to write the chapter. And I feel like had you asked me now, it would have been way easier because we have so much time on our hands. <laughs> and it, it was really easy to make up a lot of reasons why I couldn't sit down and do it. So anyway, thank you for that gift of including me. You know, I was asking Lynn before, like how out of the thousands of people <laughs> that um, have been in Supernatural, how did she decide who to ask? And so who knows, maybe they'll just be this will be a series of books that'll just keep rolling out. <laughs> hey, maybe it will be. I feel like, I mean, I, I, I'm patting myself on the back just for picking all of you because I, I really thought all of you would write something inspiring and that's exactly what happened. So you should be patting yourselves, all of you on the back for coming through with that. And I, I love yours, Lauren. I think it's oh. totally relatable and what you said about how the SPN family does feel that way for so many of us makes it something that I think everybody can see themselves in. Great, good. That's what I was going for. <laughs> you you did it. You did it. Um, in case you guys didn't notice, so Shoshana Stern had to go and she left a little goodbye in the chat down there. So I hope you uh, saw that. Um, our other interpreter, Robin, is having technical difficulties right now. Um, so we hope that she gets her camera back up soon. Right now, we can't see her. Um, hopefully, it'll come back because Spring can't keep doing this for the entire time where she's going to be absolutely exhausted. So <laughs> we're crossing our fingers, Robin. Um, OK, who is up next? Uh, Carrie. So Carrie, can you tell us a little bit about what you wanted to write about in your chapter? Sure. Um... I, um, I tied mine into my blog, which is called State of Slay. And, um, you know, through my blog, I share my experience and um, my journey from living in the darkness to living in the light today. Um, and so I relate to a lot of what's been said already and, and um, you know, living with anxiety and depression and, um, and a suicide attempt. And, um, you know, it's interesting because my journey was supernatural. I was in the first season when it was brand new and maybe one or two episodes had aired and there wasn't social media. And then I came back 10 years later to play a different character where it was a different ball game. And so I had no idea what was going to come at me when that second episode aired 10 years later. Um, and it was like the full power of the SBN family. <laughs> and it was amazing because I had gotten like letters and different things over the years 
um, because the first episode I did is not necessarily a fan favorite and uh, people had opinions. And, um, and then I came back 10 years later to do an episode that's like so loved by, by the fandom. And, um, but through all of that, I launched my blog and it's been incredible just connecting with um, the fans at conventions in different places. Um, who also have a similar journey to mine. And we've been able to connect because I'm very open and honest and raw in my blogs about my journey that they've reached out to me saying, oh my gosh, that's how I felt, or I did that, or, um, you know, I got through that too, or how did you get through that? And so it's just been an incredible way to really connect, especially with the women. Um, they tend to reach out more um, although I do get little messages from guys every once in a while that go, oh, I don't comment much, but I read your blogs and I really like them. <laughs> but the women are more vocal and um, it's been incredible to really get to meet a lot of really amazing women in the fandom at the conventions and really have some great heart to heart talks um, or maybe, you know, have some, some share some tears in the ladies room. Um, and so I really, my chapter is really about my appreciation of their love and support and I'm sharing a little bit about my journey. Um, and so it was a really, my chapter is really a love letter to all of those women who have supported my blog and who I've gotten to meet and, and chat with over the years and connect not only, uh, you know, in regards to the show, but also on a more personal level. And, you know, through the fandom, I'm actually now an advisory board member with uh, Trish Baker on Attitudes in Reverse. In fact, Daphne, my my doggy, and I are, are visiting a school and virtually uh, on Zoom um, in New Jersey next week to talk about mental health and suicide prevention. So um, that all came about through the fandom and that came, up, came about through Trish and I talking at um, a convention in Las Vegas. So I, you know, I think as an actor, so many times you do a job and you're grateful for that job and then you go home and then you're like, where's the next job? Supernatural is something that stays with you um you know it's it's not just a job you know it's exciting to be there and it's a great experience but then there's the, this all this love that comes when that episode airs and continues for years right and um you really dig i really feel like i'm a part of the family and that's such an honor because there's just so much love there and support so um my chapter is is a thank you to all of you out there who have supported me and followed me through the years. So thank you. And I think a lot of people relate to your chapter, just like in Family Don't End With Blood, a lot of people really related to Jared Padalecki's chapter when he talked about his own struggle with depression and anxiety and not wanting to keep on going. So that's one of the reasons that this book benefits Random Acts and SPN survivors, because that is such important work. And Family Don't End With Blood actually benefited Random Acts and um, Attitudes in Reverse that I'm also on the board of. So super important. Thank yeah, you, absolutely. Carrie. Thank and, you. And your dog is adorable, by the way. Oh, thank you. She's yeah. being camera shy tonight. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, so Lee, we have two Lees. Lee Majdub, you are up next. Um, no. So can you talk a little bit about um, writing your chapter, which is about your portrayal of Hannah, which was... I thought such an interesting role. And then maybe you want to also say a little bit about uh, you were in Sonic the movie. And I know your, your character in that is also a very memorable character. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, with regards to writing the book, again, I, I, I was one of those people that I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know if, uh, if I want to do this. I don't know if my writing's good enough. And I don't know if I can um, put into words what what being part of Supernatural meant and what uh, what the portrayal of Hannah ended up meeting um, down the line. You know, uh, Supernatural for me was, was a show I really was striving to get on and didn't get many opportunities at it. And then once I had kind of let go, I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna get on the show, it's fine. Then I got the opportunity to audition for Hannah. And uh, the challenge with Hannah was that Erica Carroll had I played Hannah already, right? Nine episodes or something. 
So I had a little bit to draw from there, but also trying to figure out how do you, how do you make it your own, right? How do you make it something that's yours, but also an homage to what Erica did and also to what the fans have come to know Hannah as. Um, so it was, it was about learning, you know, that angels don't have a gender and the love that Hannah and Castiel have is, isn't what, you know, um, like a human type of love. It's, it's, uh, it's almost uh, pure in a sense where, you know, uh, not necessarily a sexual attraction or anything. So for me, the challenge was how do I, you know, how do I show that? How do I, you know, and to play a, a, just a guardian angel. So I was trying to figure out, okay, I got to play maybe this guardian angel is like super extra, like alpha male, you know, trying to, to cover up some insecurities type thing. And then when Hannah takes over, I could soften that up a little bit um, and be more me, which was funny enough. Um, but yeah, to, to not really play gender and to just play uh, a something that was alive and could feel and was trying to battle with, you know, love or duty, which I talk about in the book. Like that was Hannah's challenge was, do I do what's right? Or do I do what my heart is telling me, you know, with regards to Castiel. Um, I initially called Hannah a uh, she and um, talked about her in the female sense until I learned that angels didn't identify. And then I had a lot of fans start talking to me about, uh, you know, their experience with being non-binary or gender fluid and how much Hannah meant to them uh, when, when that angel took over a male vessel. Um, and that was something that I never, never imagined, uh, you know, that performance would mean what it meant to, to the fans. And also I put a lot of pressure on myself. I was scared. I was scared to, to play Hannah because again, Erica had played Hannah so well. And then um, you know, the fear of letting the fans down and letting the writing down and letting myself down and, you know, have I taken on too much? And how do I play like this angel that's inside this body? And well, you know, just like stacking all these chips against myself until finally just kind of, you know, letting go and just trusting that, you know, as long as you play love, uh, and intention, uh, you know, hopefully it'll come through. And the, the greatest thing was looking on Twitter, like that moment that, that Hannah takes that vessel and Hannah looks at the Castiel and Castiel tells, you know, says Hannah. I mean, all, all of Twitter was like, I knew it was Hannah. I knew it was Hannah. Like <laughs> the look in, look in Lee's eyes and everything. I was like, oh, okay. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm not going to die. I'm going to be okay. Um, but yeah, it was, it was amazing to be, to be part of that. And then that was just supposed to be one episode. And then to be asked back, um, you know, that was my first recurring ever was, uh, was like my second episode on Supernatural. And, you know, I, I didn't let, honestly, I didn't like the way Hannah went out. Um, it just, it just seemed a little bit harsh, but again, it was, it was nice to be brought back to give Hannah an end. You know what I mean? At least Hannah got and, and and tried to do what was best and, and I think went went down swinging and, and believing in what they believed in. Yeah. Um, yeah. The so character yeah. really, really had an impact on people. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently, and, apparently your Sonic character also is are you having fun with yeah. that? <laughs> that was that was honestly a huge, huge surprise. Uh Agent Stone and, and Sonic was uh uh, I don't think any of us knew that that character was going to have as much of an impact as uh, as he did. Uh, and that was honestly, that was thanks to like Jim Carrey and, and Jeff Fowler, the director. I mean, on the page, uh, my character was supposed to be very kind of like straightforward, no humor, no nothing. And then, um, you know, it was, it was Jim. Jim Carrey was like, I think there's more. I think like there's a reason why he's here. And I think there's more to the relationship. And we started to riff and he wanted to improvise and, and that to me, I was just like, I grew up on Ace Ventura and, you know, The Mask and Jim Carrey's been a hero of mine, like since I was nine, 10 years old. Um, so that was, that was an experience that was, it wasn't even on a bucket list. You know what I mean? Like, that's how impossible it seemed to me. Like, that's never going to happen. And I thought Jim wasn't going to act again. And yeah, he's not on that list of people that 
I'm going to work it. It's not going to happen. And then, you know, to, to get the opportunity to, to play a character that is so involved with him um, on a video game that I grew up playing is just unbelievable. And the, the fan art and, the, and, the, and just the fan response and the love for the movie and my character has been like a dream come true. Sometimes those things just come together. Yeah, those are those are two like iconic roles now, which is it's crazy. Awesome. It's so crazy. Yeah. Um, other Lee, Lee Rumor, that I'm going to pivot to you because you also played a character just in one episode, but an episode that's really important to a lot of people and a character that's really important to a lot of people. So what was your experience working on that episode, The Chitters, and what did you want to write about in your chapter? Um, yeah, I, I was, I was a little hesitant, a little hesitant to, uh, to want to be part of the book at first, uh, just fear of some kind of judgment. Um, I even read the chapter now and sometimes uh, I'm like, ah, I should have said this or kind of like as an actor, when you, after you do your lines or you go home and you're like, oh I should have said it this way and I still read it I've read it like a few times and I'm like oh man I could have said it so different um well you made it easier to for me to actually uh well you guided me through it it was it was a big help um I'm not uh uh academics was not really my forte going uh go, in school and what have you so writing it wasn't uh it was a bit of a challenge for me uh but I mean, you helped me get through it and that, that I, I really appreciate. So thank you so much. Um, the Chitters. Uh, I, I, it's unfortunate that you still nowadays have to, you know, feel like you have to walk on eggshells to take on certain roles uh, in the world we live in today. And it's, it's upsetting that, uh, you know, gay, lesbian, humans they're humans and it and it's it's sad that we still have this issue and uh i i love the fact that that episode was written uh like an honest and a very human-like person wrote it and there wasn't it wasn't so focused on oh this is a gay couple the hunter husbands as I don't know who first tweeted that or gave it a hashtag. I have no idea, but it it's beautiful. And uh, I feel... I feel honored to, to be part of something that's, that has made an impact on sorry no i that that's how that's how moving that episode was for people and your character and it comes through in your chapter too and it's beautiful i didn't think this was going to happen actually uh <laughs> but now listening to myself and what it what this show means to a lot of people and myself i was honestly i was never a fan of supernatural uh i had an idea what it was about um and uh never auditioned for many many years and then getting the opportunity and i i actually moved from toronto from toronto to vancouver because i was having a hard time here and i needed some kind of change and i said to my wife i said hey i know we're trying to have kids and it's been really tough and Right now, I need I need something, and I loved Vancouver, so I was like, I need to go there, and I need to I need to try and make something happen for myself before we have kids, so I feel good. And I was I was going through a downtime, and so it it brought me back to life. It brought me back to life which is what it's done for so many people. I almost don't think that's a coincidence oh, because I've heard from so many, both cast members and fans that in one way or another, Supernatural yeah. came into their life at a time when they really needed it. It was so unexpected, Lynn. It was so unexpected. I, 
I didn't I didn't have any expectations of going to Vancouver. All I know all I knew was that I needed to get there and I needed to plant my feet again because I I worked there on another show, Smallville, like 13 years prior to that. So I didn't know what it was going to be like and I didn't have any expectations, but it was my I feel, I feel honored, I feel lucky, but it was the right time. It, that's just the way it was supposed to be. I went in, it was my first audition and then I booked it and I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? She's like, yeah, you booked it. I was like, all right, somebody's on my side. I don't know, but this is amazing. And didn't realize, I didn't realize, I, I'm trying to remember, I, I, I don't think, I don't think Hugo, hi Hugo, He's not unfortunately with us, but he's, he's uh, sick tonight or Hugo. Yeah, he is sick, yeah. Too, but, um, but did I didn't realize, I don't think I realized when I was auditioning that he was a gay character. And to me, that that shows that it's it was just so beautifully written that it's just a human being playing. It's playing a person. So and so I feel honored that that even during shooting, uh, what an impact that this was actually going to have on on people afterwards, and predominantly throughout, I guess maybe three four months after shooting, <clears throat> um, wasn't allowed to really say much, and then finally when it when it aired, you know it just it was heavy like it came in, and unfortunately yeah I got some I got some bad I got some bad. I think my inbox for my messages is open. <laughs> so at least at that time, I don't know if it still is, but I got some nasty messages. Mm. Like, how can you take on a role like that? It's like, what? Mm. Take on a role of a human? It's sad. It's sad. Um, but I had a great time shooting. I, I've been 23 years as an actor at that time, yearning for to sink my feet and to be welcomed and loved like I was instantly by by Jared and Jensen as two leads who fully lean on each other big time as we had those discussions. If one of them is slightly off, they lean on each other, you know, to take the weight of the show because it's a lot of responsibility. And having those in-depth conversations with them and 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 you got you got a, a good sense of the family aspect of that, what that show is. And like I said, it, it brought the love back into the business for me. Cause I was, I was, I was hating it. I wasn't having fun and um, it brought life back to me and I'm so grateful for it. I wish I, yeah, I wish we had gone back on the show, but our characters were tired and what have you even though people said oh you'll be back you'll be back people were people you know characters die and they come back i'm like oh okay so there's a, so you're saying there's a chance and it didn't happen but you know what i still feel it it's in me it will never go away even though it was only one episode but it, it was it felt like it felt like 15 episodes you know and um i i hope i get that feeling on set again uh it's been slow like lately you know, especially right now, but I mean, all in general, I feel honored. Well, it, and, uh, it, I, made, yeah. it made a difference to so many people. So thank you so much for sharing it in your chapter. I am so glad that's part of the book and you goes too, even though he can't be here. I love his. Yeah. Chapter. I mean, we both had a blast and um, I know for sure that he wishes he could um, be part of this and share his love for the show, his experience and, uh, and hoping that this negativity way of life that we live in sometimes and judgment, you know, my, and I, I said it in my chapter too, my dad hit it spot on the head. It was my dad always said, you know, seek to understand, seek information before investigation. And there's too much, there's too much judgment in the world and not enough trying to understand where people come from, you know, and, it's true. It is. Is yeah. yeah. Anyways, that, <laughs> I've, I've said enough. Um, but I thank you know, thank you, thank you, everybody who's making this happen. It it, it means a lot to me. 
Um, and uh, all the best after all of this. And just can't wait to go hug another human. <laughs> so it's, I think, I think we're, I all, we're all there. It's going to yeah, be yeah. a Anyways, hug thanks, fest. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much. You. Um, got a couple people left to go. I want to get to um, Chad, your character is also a character that really had an impact on the fandom. You want to talk a little bit about your, uh, your chapter, The Magic of the Mullet? Uh, well, it took me months to write. I mean, absolutely. I've been working on this chapter for years. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, no, you were so, um, uh, it was such an honor to be asked to be a part of the book. So, you know, I'm just excited to be a part of, you know, what we, you and I have known each other for quite a long time since the beginning, like the, the dawn of time, it seems um and that's how long i've been on the show it seems the dawn of time uh you know again this was before um social media any of that stuff and uh, they were they were looking for some new regulars and they brought on me and uh, alona and sam for the roadhouse and then you know the roadhouse they kind of i think wavered a little bit and didn't know what they wanted to do so they uh, they killed me, and uh, you know I, a lot of people die on Supernatural. But uh, what happened was after that I you know started doing the conventions, and that's like when the love started to like be like oh this is really something you know. And and meeting you, I think I mean we met like in Icon, which was like years ago, like the first conventions. Um, it's where I met my lover Gabe. You know, because we didn't actually, well, actually, no, I met Gabe on set. That's right. I met Gabe on set when I was filming in season two. But, uh, you know, we talk a lot about, like, what the fan experience is like. And it's not, I, I, I don't even like saying fan. It's family, right? Um, and, and, and the love that has come from this show, it, it, it goes beyond characters and, you know, acting and it, for me it, it goes well beyond that it's it's uh i don't know it's it's a it's a deep love that, that that that's felt that you don't feel you know going out to i don't know it, there's something different about it um you know and, and fans have helped through family crises and stuff like that you know what i mean it's like deep so I, you know when i think of supernatural now like I rarely think about my character. I, to be honest with you, I think about like the people. I think about this. I think about you know going out to these conventions all over the world. Like I've got, gotten to see places that I would never go to because of Supernatural, and hanging out with you know a lot of people that are actually in this feed. You know, <laughs> we never worked together on set, but man, we've you know, been to Rome together, we've been to like, and gotten to meet so many beautiful fans all over the world. It's, um, it's astounding. And it, it, you know, the love for Supernatural will always, always keep going. You know, that's, that's my theory. I like, I like that you, uh, that you kind of ended your chapter with that, because it is so hopeful. I think, you know, the show might be ending, but you're right, this is so much more than a show and it's so reciprocal and it's been so important to so many people and that that's not gonna go away. That community is there and that the way it's changed us all is there. So I love that you ended your chapter with that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's unlike any other fan base in the world and people are still gonna need their fix, you that's know, right. in some regard <laughs> right. after the show's over and whenever that ends. You know, <laughs> right. We're not we're not going anywhere. I we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So, you know, my hope is to keep going and, and do these conventions and, you know, who knows what this will go. It's not it's not over. It's just the ne next chapter. That's right. Todd, you can you talk about that a little bit? You you're a you're a fanboy of a lot of things yourself. So I know you we've had interesting conversations over the years about fandom because you identify as a fan yourself. So can you talk a little bit about your chapter? You also played a character that was in one episode, but it was a really iconic episode. Um, you know, I, th I think I, I can, maybe I can speak for every actor here. We, we all were 
possibly drawn into doing this for a living because we were fans of entertainment, whether it was plays, uh, college plays, high school plays, or just films and television that we that imprinted on us at some point in a massively valuable way that we said, you know what, I need to connect to that. I want to do that because I was moved by something, I, I connected to something that I saw or a film or a, or a play or whatnot that, that made me want to uh, tell stories as well, professionally. Um, or we just had really good abs, which isn't me. But uh, <laughs> what I, what, when you asked me to, to, to write uh, my chapter, it kind of, um, was a bit of no brainer of what I wanted to write about. Now I, I came to Supernatural in 08. So that I was in season four, was Halloween episode. So I was really early on in terms of the, like the, there's, there's so much super, there's, there's twice as much Supernatural, almost three times as much Supernatural after my episode. So that I'm humbled to be asked to be part of this uh, collective of people. And I did, I did one. It was, it was literally seven days of my life, but uh, a transformative seven days. Um, so, in terms of uh, like the nerdiest people I know are are actors, and, and the nerdiest conversations that I've ever had have been on set when we aren't shooting. Uh, I, I believe Jared and I were were arguing about the Nolan Batman film. Uh, while we were shooting that episode, I was dressed like a, a, a Batman of sorts, but uh, but we were having a nerdy conversation. So um, it's it, it's not hard for me to understand uh, the passion that people have. That we we are beings that seek connection, uh, and we seek connection, and we build tribes and. And whether it's sports teams or whether it's political uh, affiliations or it's uh, entertainment. So, so it, it doesn't surprise me that a show that is, is well-written and a show that is well-acted and that is scary and thrilling and heartfelt and heartbreaking and, and like Lee was talking about, it, 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 it connects to people who do feel marginalized. Uh, it, it connects to... Um, dark places in us. I mean, it, it is a show about external nightmares and it's a sh and I think genre, genre very much, um, people connect to it because it is part of our subconscious. It's that, it's that Lovecraftian place that we all live in uh, when, we, when we close our eyes at night. So I think when we, it connects, uh, when we're able to uh, watch other people face fears and overcome them with family and brotherhood and hope and uh, connection, we too go, well, that's, that's what we do every day. And that's what everybody's doing right now in the world is we're facing a global nightmare collectively. And so we see comfort in these, uh, in these uh, tribes that we've built and even more now online. What's fascinating is talking about this and slowly watching more people pop online and in the feed speaking to yeah we're to we're at that 10 o'clock hour now so we've got the fan contributors starting to come in too so welcome yeah. everybody who just jumped on <laughs> um and then as far as my experience on the show itself uh, just to be trusted with one of the granddaddies of all monsters uh you know a, a role often i i my my job is to yeah, hit my mark and scowl and snark and 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 pull a trigger. Uh, but this one was fun because it's leaned into theatrical background, learning a dialect, trying to uh, emulate uh, a performance that is uh, is iconic, and then being able to flip that over and show the the wounded man that makes the monster uh, was why well, I think more than anything. Yes, it was Jensen and later Hosen. Yes, it was black and white. <laughs> but I think why people connected with that creature uh, is because the writers allowed us to see uh, his pain mm -hmm. and not just the, the cartoonish bravado. So uh, 
I am fortunate that, uh, you know, the first time I ever heard about Twitter was at a supernatural convention. And that was, <laughs> that was like in 09. I had heard people talking about it on an elevator. Um, so uh, I, I watched the internet grow up with my relationship to, to Supernatural. It's, uh, it's been a wild ride and continues to be a wild ride. And, and, and again, one episode and 12 years later, it is one of the things that people still are kind enough and I'm humbled enough to be uh, connected to and recognized for and asked about the stories. I said, you know, as a Supernatural guest star, we become often a window. Uh, to, to find out about Jensen and Jared, like that, what were they like to work with? And yes, all the stories are true. They are as good and wonderful uh, and, and kind and generous. And, uh, and I, I've, I've been lucky to know, uh, to know Jared since he was 17 years old. So uh, watching him grow up and, and, and take the mantle of, uh, of, carry the show when I did the show there was only two people on the call sheet that were series regular and to carry that burden for for his most of his life is is quite a, an astounding thing and and uh, I'm lucky to call those guys friends and uh and and the, the friendships that I've made through conventions and getting to go overseas and uh singing songs and getting drunk with people and and all the things that you do, I'd be doing anyway, but they invite me to do them in other parts of the world. So that's great. Those are, those are the bonding experiences that happen for the SPN family, whether you're yes. actors or fans, those yeah. same kinds of bonding experiences happen. True. Well, I, I love your episode. I love that nuanced character. I love your chapter. So thank you. Um, for those of you fans who are popping on, we have one more actor that I want to talk to before we switch gears a little bit. So uh, Brendan, you are last but not least. I love your chapter so much and I love new Doug so much. So can you talk a little bit about what you wrote about in your chapter and, and why you think your character sort of uh, has stayed in people's consciousness? Sure, one, sorry, I'm having some technical, you gotta hang on. Oh, that's, hang on. that's what Zoom does. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. I don't know what's happening. So I, of course it's going to crash now. Like that's Of course. Time. When, when I'm um, on yeah, and it's, it's all good. you. <laughs> yeah. It'd be good. No problem. Um, yeah. Um, sorry. I was trying to do that. Um, I have a really uh, interesting uh, seven legged cattle story to tell you after if we have time, if we have time. <laughs> oh, you're, you're one um, up in yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, uh, on uh, Doug, yeah, my um, so I guess we've been chatting for a while, uh, Lynn, and um, uh, wow, there's a lot to to. There's a, I my I'm chapter ended up being kind of long. Um, yes, and, 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 very, and awesome. Yeah, and um, well, I guess it the the theme that I rolled with was uh, there are no small parts, um, and many people might know that I started in set deck. Um, was my job for about 10 years. In fact, Lee Majdub and I were in class um, together while I would like be late for class because I was like working on set and like miles away. Um, and that's when I was uh, just hustling hard to, to do it. And I got this, I, um, I, I, I talk about why I was, on, some people might know that I was on um, Supernatural in season eight um, in, a, in an episode that was cut or, or the part was cut at least uh with elena huffman i uh, did a scene with her and another guy and um yeah um and i was devastated that that didn't happen and then um a couple of years later of course i i got um the audition for for doug which ended up being a, a you know a larger role um it was uh such a a, a good good timing for me in 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 my life too um it was the biggest thing that i had done and then, up to uh, that point uh, a couple and, years later of course i, I thought uh, oh oh i'm reverberating oh my god just <laughs> crashing hard here i don't know why um, that happened it was yeah. not until then that was weird this um yeah anyways um yeah i i you know to get this role and to work with brianna buckmaster who um we you know, I had not met prior and we clicked and um, 
to to be part of her storyline i'm very much understanding that i was a part of of her storyline which was so important i think resonated with a lot of people um her character we saw her character grow from sort of being sort of m meek and mild in the background and and finding her strength and and um and becoming her own person and and being matched with someone that maybe that would accept her for who she is in, in doug um <clears throat> i was of course um so thrilled to get the email that uh, doug got to come back uh this time and then you know i'm flipping pages and to find out oh i get to become a vampire and then oh i get to like peace out and i'm like all right like hunter no thanks like i'm out like that was uh sort of shocking um but i understood um where he was coming from and i i sort of go into my theory um about that um that reaction to, to do that and of course the, the the reaction is to want to to stay and, and help and be a hunter but also it was like uh, five minutes ago i was asleep and a vampire and i don't know what the hell's going on and people are lying to me and so um i just thought that doug kind of needed a minute and you know supernatural did not finish shooting here in vancouver um there's still a few to shoot so and Doug is one of the only characters I think still alive in the canon um, that's sticking around. So I was, you know, it would be cool to make a, a comeback with, with bullet straps on my chest and Rambo gun and I come in and shoot some, <laughs> that's sort of like the dream, I guess. I can dream. Um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that would be really good. But um, yeah, I mean, um, I think the sort of sum of, of my chapter is that I was it, to get to where I am now and I'm knock on wood um, full-time acting well not so much now there's not so much of an industry going on right now but um, I, I grinded and hustled so hard to get to where I am including uh, talking about um, during that time that I uh, the summer prior to shooting my first uh, episode of supernatural my grandfather passed away who was um the first um the first person in in my life that i, I dealt with uh, closely that had passed on and um of course um as murphy's law would have it one of the shoot days was uh, my grandfather's funeral in toronto and i had to make the difficult decision um to I tried my best. I thought maybe I could red eye flight back and uh, it was not going to happen. And my agent said, Hey, this is the reality is, is you just might not get this because they need these states and so forth. And, um, and so I missed his funeral in order to, to shoot. And what ended up being this, you know, amazing experience and knowing him and he would have been like, ah, like, don't worry about me. Like go on go and do that and you know like yeah so it, it was uh it was uh it was a, a heavy a heavy time in, in shooting that um, knowing that one day I was shooting on set and like about my family is all gathering right now and here I am shooting it like so many conflicting things I don't know don't know how to feel about like this is I'm awesome but I'm sad but I'm not and this is great you know it um but these are the things that uh life uh life throws at you so um yeah and, and to play doug is a doug is a nice guy i talk about people referring to me as the nice guy and what that means and um am i less am, am i more beta because of that am i less of a man or less of a person or 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 um i struggle with that you know a lot in my life of uh how I should sort of should be and and which is why I, I related to Doug so much because uh yeah he's he's maybe not the the sharpest tool in the shed at times but uh his heart is in the right place and uh and he's also when he when you need to count on him uh he'll be there and uh, he'll call you on it too so I think um, that's why people just I mean you related to Doug but I think we related to Doug too he was mm -hmm. truly a nice guy and he also was sort of a very realistic person in that most of us if we got turned into a vampire would run away and be like like i am piecing out like no yeah 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that was sort of the, that's why it was such a, it was a great writing to that because uh, of course you want to see him wake up and, you know, blink his eyes and be like, yeah, let's go kill those vampires. It's like, no, the last like memory he had was just like, I have to like bite my girlfriend and try to kill her now because I'm hungry and I'm a vampire. Like not knowing, like literally finding out like two seconds prior that they even exist. So, uh, and then, yeah, why, why wouldn't it? It, it might be too much, but, um, but then again, you know, I think uh, Sheriff Donna needed a bit of time too to come around, so. Yeah, know. exactly. Well, I loved your chapter. I loved all of your chapters. So we, we are at the end of our time with the <laughs> actors. Thank you guys so much for coming. You can Thank unmute you. yourselves, actors, if you want to like Thank you. say hello to the fans so and much. goodbye to the fans. Bye. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks so Bye. much, Lynn. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Have a great safe, night. Safe. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Take Thank care. you. And, and while actor, actors are exiting, the rest of you are fitting more of you in here, trying to get everybody into the Zoom room here. There we go, lots more people coming. So welcome everybody, all the contributors. We've got writers here, we've got photographers here, we've got artists here. So really looking forward to talking to all of you. Um, just so you know, the way we're doing this is we have two interpreters here who have been so kind to stay with us. This is a really long time and they are working their butts off. So we have um, Spring and Robin. So we're gonna try to talk one at a time so that they can interpret for us. So I'll ask you guys, I'll sort of call on you. I feel like I'm in my professor role, but I'm really not. But just so that you can talk one at a time, I'll just sort of ping you. And then if you could just like say a few words about your contribution to the book and you know what the process was like for you. Um, maybe you know what you wrote about in your chapter, just a little tiny thumbnail, or what it was like sort of picking the photographs for the book that you included or the artwork that you included. So welcome everybody. I just have a randomized list here of people. So I'm going to go by my list here. So Amy, Amy Hutton, you are up first. Can you talk a little bit about your chapter? Hi, hi, it's so fun. I can see all friends, friends everywhere. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a really, it was a very new experience for me because um, I think when, Lynn, when you first contacted me, I was like not 100% sure. And we sort of had a bit of a back and forth, back and forth about what you were looking at and what the, the, what the tone of the book was gonna be. And eventually I was like, oh, well, maybe I've got something to say. And so I, I went with it, but for me, um, it, it all kind of uh, fell at the same time that I was changing direction in my life and I was literally giving up my full-time job as a television producer, selling my unit, uh, moving back into my family home and trying to start a career as a writer, trying to finish a long um, drawn out process of writing my first book, which I by the way, I finished the first draft and I'm onto the second draft. So I did do it. So this kind of fell in in that period. Um, and so it was it was fantastic in a couple of different ways because it gave me an opportunity to write, you know, which I want to do, um, possibility of getting published, and also then also giving me a bit of an experience in the back and forth in the edit process of talking to an editor and trying to, you know, flesh out my ideas and trying to, you know, work how you and the and the other people involved were wanting everything to sound and how it was wanting to flow into a, a bigger picture book which I'd never done before and I'm hoping I can get to do later as well um, so that was a really great experience and um, I basically spoke about the fact that I had chucked you know my other life and tried to start this life and how um, it did all start with Supernatural and it did all come from wanting to um, just wanting to talk about it, you know, and share my thoughts and hear what other people have to say and doing ridiculously long comments on other people's blogs until I started my own and, and then sort of branching out into all different areas of writing within context of the fandom that then made me want to explore writing outside of that. So um, that's basically what I talk about. And I also talk about in it, um, 
you know, how the show kind of made me feel okay about who I am and the choices that I've made in my life, which aren't necessarily the most, you know, what everybody is doing. Most people don't throw everything away and, and kind of go for a whole different life and, you know, like women of a certain age are often married with children and that kind of thing. And I didn't go down that road and never wanted to. So, you know, I, I think being, um, part of the fandom watching the show and seeing the journeys of the characters but also seeing the journeys of my fellow fans and them finding themselves and discovering themselves and being okay with it and also discovering their art and being brave enough to share it um, and brave enough to be open to you know back and forth about their art as well I think really impacted me in such a way that it not only shifted the direction of my life but also how I um, uh, you know, uh, my the way I am with myself and, and also the way I am with other people, more accepting, more open, more all that kind of stuff. So that's what I went into in the chapter and that's basically where it came from. And, you know, we had those conversations and that it was sort of more about identity, I guess, as well as being about transformation. Yeah, and I and I think that's why your your chapter is very relatable because so many of us, I think, sort of rediscover or explore or kind of consolidate our identity through some kind of fandom or a show that we identify with. So I think I think your chapter really beautifully brought that out and, and congrats on finishing the book. Oh yeah, thanks. Uh, I also even got another story, you know this, I've got another story being published later this year in August in, a, in awesome. an anthology book. So published twice this year, I was like, I signed two writer's contracts this year, go and me. So, a little, um, a little yeah, validation, so yeah. validation <laughs> for your life journey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let's see who's up next. Uh, Vicky, my colleague Vicky. So Vicky and I actually are professors together at the same university. Um, so I asked Vicky to write a chapter because I knew that she could write something that was also going to be really relatable. Do you want to say a couple of words about what you wrote about Vicky? Sure. Um, Lynn and I have been talking for years about the place of fandoms for persons with disabilities. And I'd always thought of writing something academic, but this was a lot more fun. And so the chapter started out uh, acknowledging loss and difference in a community of persons with disabilities. But the week I was writing it, Thanksgiving week, um, unfortunately, we had some losses in my family. I lost three family members and Thanksgiving turned into a triple memorial week. If you can believe it, the odds are bad. And I said, I can't possibly write this. And I said, no, actually, we're talking about loss and the sense of loss we're all feeling. It's the perfect time to write this. And so, you know, life met fiction and it all came together. And I'm just so proud to be part of this. And thank you, Lynn, for the opportunity. And uh, I've seen your names before and have been fans of all y'all for so long, followed your writing. I'm not one to comment on a lot of social media, but I'm there listening to all of you. And it's a pleasure to meet you. That's about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's, I mean, that's exactly what you wrote about. And I love what you wrote. And I just selfishly love having one of my university colleagues as also a part of the book. It was, it was really sort of special for me. So thank you for contributing. For me too. <laughs> awesome. Um, let me, let me mix it up a little bit and uh, ask one of our photographers to talk a little bit. Suzanne, do you want to talk a little bit about the sort of the what it's like to have your pictures in a book what that feels like and how you feel about the ones that are in there um well hi i'm from canada um it was it was surprising um i got a, a message from kim on the sunday of a supernatural convention in toronto um and i was surprised that she would even suggests that I, I do this. Um, but I said yes, of course, immediately, because um, I love photography and I've been doing it all my life. Um, I took the easy way out and I let Kim choose the pictures that would be going in the book. Um, I sent, I think it was 60 pictures of all the different uh, folks that were at the convention in Toronto and Kim, I think, did a fantastic job of picking the best of the bunch. And I am extremely glad to have 
made a, a small contribution to the, the fantastic book that you've put together. So thank you. Thank and you. you. Thank you, Kim, for always believing in my work. I met Kim in Hawaii when I was there for the convention and she has always been a great supporter of my, my work. So thank you very much. You're amazing. Thank you for being in this with us. Thank you. Thank you both for helping to make the book so incredibly pretty. It is the prettiest, I know I'm, <laughs> I'm not unbiased, but I think it's the prettiest book I've ever seen in my life, both inside and outside. So thank you for your contribution to that. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, so that I want to pop on to Sherry because we have one of our artists here too. So speaking of the book being really pretty, um, Sherry, what was the process like of thinking about, you know, knowing that you were going to have your art in a book? Was that intimidating, exciting? How did you look? Because you're very prolific. It was very intimidating. I had I didn't know where to start. I ran into you at the Jacksonville Convention. My daughter got me hooked on the show, and I had some of my artwork there. Um, and I just happened to show you some and you said, well, send me some sometime. It was pretty good. So I did. And then you contacted me, um, said maybe you're interested in doing, using some for a book. And I, I had no idea where to begin because I have literally hundreds and hundreds of pictures. So I sent you what I thought was some of my favorites and probably, I don't know, 60, 70 pictures. <laughs> And then you chose some and I was just ecstatic to see the amount that you did use in the book and the everything was so beautiful in there, the cover art and the photos and everything. So I was just so privileged to have a, a part of that. Well, I think we're privileged to have your art. Every, every, I mean, I feel privileged to have all your chapters, your photography, your art. It is, like I said, a really, really pretty book. So thank you, thank you so much. Thanks. Um, let's see who up who is up next. Um, Emerson, are you here? Yes. Emerson, can you talk a little bit about the chapter that you wrote? I know yours was one of the last ones who we were able to pull together and get in before the deadline. So you had to write really fast. Can you talk a little bit about what you wrote about? Absolutely. And abs um, huge props to you, Lynn, for putting it all together. Um, I've seen the other side of the editorial process and you did an amazing job um, bringing all of us, especially for me, on a, on a short term uh, timeline. Um, for, for my chapter, it really just came out of conversations that you and I had the first time that we met at my very first convention in D.C. last November. Um, just having that opportunity to realize that there is a chance to talk about topics such as the representation of, of minority, ethnic minorities, racial minorities, um, especially with regard to native and indigenous communities. That we also had a, a, another conversation about uh, people with disabilities and with my background in linguistics and speech pathology, the connection with what Shoshana is, was able to write anyway for the, the book, like being able to find connections that way, it really just guided into how I wanted to put stories together. And it really, I mean, with the way that I wrote my chapter, it really was a stream of consciousness um, thinking about thinking about watching that episode for the very first time all those years ago and just having those memories of American gods still in my mind after reading it not too um, not that far before and as I shared in my chapter all of the stories of the Filipino monsters and folktales that are part of my my life my family's life that was all very real to me and it made sense to tie that all together into talking about how native communities are represented We've come a long, long way from that Wendigo episode, um, season one, episode two, to Don't Go Into the Woods in season 14. Uh, I, I focus on that in the chapter. I saw how I could see myself as a Filipino in a native uh, representation. And I saw how disabilities could be represented, including the way that American um, sign language is used on the show, which very rarely other shows would use um, prior to that. And it was just an amazing way of, of tying together representation in ways that made sense for me, uh, knowing that I wanna see myself in the stories. And I do, I do see myself in different ways. Um, so it was really great to reflect on that. And again, Maraming um, Salamat Lynn, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to put that all together. Well, th thank you for pulling it all. I love what your chapter, how it shows the evolution of the show. It turned out there are a couple of chapters that kind of trace the evolution of the show in one way or another and touch on the, the importance of representation. And yours took a really interesting slant and I love the way it came out. So thank you for busting your butt to get that <laughs> done because I know you did. <laughs> thank you so much, Lynn. 
Um, let me jump to Jessica because your your chapter also is one of the ones that really traces the evolution of the show. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you wrote about? Yeah, um, I was invited to write on this about almost two years, over two years ago, maybe more. Yeah, you were actually, <laughs> that's when it was a completely different book because yeah. it's before the show was going to end. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, and at that point, it was more about a book about the women in Supernatural. And so that sort of prompted what I wanted to write about because I am a feminist writer. The website I write for is like Feminism is Our Brand. Um, that's the Mary Sue. Everyone should go follow us. Um, and so I get a lot of people kind of getting up in my case about like, how can you like Supernatural and call yourself a feminist? And I wanted to write a chapter kind of explaining that and planting my flag saying that this show is, I think, feminist, but it's also a show that has evolved with television as over 15 years. You know, it was probably not very feminist in the first season. Um, I call the chapter out of the fridge and into the fire because it does start with like a double fridging via fire. Um, if you don't know, a woman in the refrigerator is a term for a woman who dies for male character development. And that is sort of the foundational element of the show. But it is a show that kind of evolved and became very self-aware and very self-referential and addressed that in its own text. You know, Chuck is even talking in season four about, and I killed your girlfriend for narrative symmetry. And as more women writers came on and television evolved, we ended up with Wayward Sisters. And we ended up with such great um, representation for women on the show and amazing female writers. And it's also a show that deconstructs toxic masculinity in a lot, really interesting way. It's a show that women really identify with for a lot of different reasons. And it's such an interesting show in terms of feminism and representation of both masculine and feminine issues that are important to us all. And so I really love it for that reason. So I want to write about like, stop telling me I can't like Supernatural because I'm a feminist. <laughs> it's a feminist show. We, well, we got in that spinoff. <laughs> I know, I know. But it was, you know, it was a really, it was really fun to write and just, oh, yep. Yeah. And uh, it's so great to be included in the book with so many people whose work I really love. Um, like, hi, Joelle and Tanya and all these wonderful people, Pansy and everyone there. So it was, uh, I'm glad that it still worked with the book, even while the tone of the book changed. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, yeah. It, became, it became a little more of a hybrid book. I didn't want to lose that. I still wanted it to be very much about that evolution and, and how far the show has come in terms of all those things that you wrote about. And I, I really think that's part of why the show has such an important legacy. So it kind of seamlessly went right into when the show was going to end, that it was also going to be about the show's legacy. So yeah, yeah. and I had to keep editing because people kept coming back from the dead. Like, oh, Eileen's fine now. Great. <laughs> That's Damn, great. Oh, Rowena's back again. Great. Change that <laughs> part of the chapter again. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Jessica had to yeah. go through quite a few edits. I had to keep saying, um, I think we need yeah. to update this. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. I love your chapter. And speaking of Joelle, are you still here, Joelle? Because you're next on the list. Did we lose her? She was here. Maybe she's having technical difficulties. All right, we'll 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 circle back and hopefully we will find Joelle and she will pop back on. Um, let's talk to another photographer. Uh, Liz, do you want to talk a little bit about, you also had to sort of come through at the 11th hour when I was looking for some specific photos. So what was that process like and how do you feel about the ones that are included? Hi, I hope the sound actually works. It um, does. Yay, my computer decided to die as I was trying to log onto this. So now I'm on the iPad. Um, but yeah, as I came in very late. So I think I had, I think I was like, oh, I could do a couple photos. How long do I have? I could get it to you on, on Monday. She's like, well, maybe tomorrow, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled an all-nighter and worked on a lot of photos. So, um, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I had some favorite photos that I went to and then found some ones that I hadn't really looked at recently. And so it was, I was able to put them together and that, that was, it was very cool. And I, since by the time that I got into it, uh, we all, we well knew the show was ending. So I, I drew for that for a lot, but I, I think the photos that I have span everywhere from 
um, 2013. I think it was the is the young is the oldest photo, and then um, I think Supernatural Nashville was the youngest. So it's kind of cool. And and I think because you you were sort of the late pictures, and we did know the show was ending, you have a couple that you contributed, which were Jared and Jensen kind of talking about the show ending at Comic Con and being kind of teary eyed. So th those are some of the make you cry photos that are in the book. And yeah. I love having them. So th thank you again, just like I said to everyone, <laughs> thank you for coming through with like, we had just next to no time to wrap this book up. So thank you for coming through like that. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> um, next up, somebody tell me if Joelle pops back in because I'm popping over her place on the list now. I'm hoping she comes back to us. But Dimitri, do you want to talk a little bit about putting together your chapter? Because you also had to put it together at a time when A, you were in the midst of a very personal and emotional journey and B, I remember you were working your butt off. So you would come home from work at night and it'd be super late and I would be like, hey, hey, can I have another draft of the chapter? So what was that process like and what did you write about in your chapter? Okay, gosh. Um not super good at being put on the spot. Um, it's, um, it was an awesome experience. Um, I always felt really bad that I, it, it took me forever to get things done. And thank you for being such a trooper, uh, tolerating me. Sorry, my, my cat is, um, okay. Aww. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting experience getting to participate in something like this. Um, I've never done anything quite like this before. Um, and trying to juggle it with work was very intense. I was actually not sure if I would make it here tonight because I got out of work about 10 minutes before this started. Um, so it was uh, uh, challenging. Um, I was watching part of the stream earlier when the actors were on, and um, I think it was um, Lee Rumor said that um, he keeps going back and reading his chapter and being like, oh man, I wish I had like put this, I wish I had put that. And I'm doing the same thing. And because um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know how, like, how in depth I should get, I didn't want it to be too long. And, then I, I got the book and I started flipping through and reading people's chapters. And, oh, man, probably could have, probably should have added more. But uh, um, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling, but. No, I think you're, um, I think you're answering was... my question. And, and <laughs> sort of, Good. <laughs> sort of eloquently kind of, you know, I think everybody else can, can relate that when you're asked to write something that's very personal, it's, it's daunting. And when you're not a writer and oh, yeah. you're not used to doing this, it's, it's extremely daunting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, um... I love your inclusion of Misha in your chapter and kind of what an important part he's played in your journey. I think that was also, that's a really nice part of your chapter. Cause one of the things that's so unique about this show is the relationship that has grown between the fans and the cast and that, that really comes through in your chapter. Thank you. Yeah, it it's it's been interesting because I I don't really talk about it too much because I never wanted it to come across any kind of weird kind of way, I guess. I didn't want it to seem like I would ever be I don't want to say bragging about an experience, but you know these experiences have meant so much to me and um it's kind of just been this interesting thing where I feel like it was just kind of right place right time um and he kind of became aware of my transition right as I started hormone replacement therapy and so it's kind of been this interesting thing where over the past four years um he, we've we've kept in touch about my transition um, and then up, up through Burbank where we 
met up at the park and had a little ceremony and cut up the binder and made prayer flags. It was, it was really special. And I look back on it and I'm just like, never in a million years would I have thought that this show that I adore, I would just be hanging out at a park one day with one of my favorite people. Yeah. Yeah. Pain meds <laughs> because I just had surgery. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't usually happen. I mean, that's what I love about no. your, your chapter is it, it does show how extraordinary it was. And at a really pivotal, important part of your life, like there's the actor from your favorite yeah. show who's participating. I, and I think there's, that's something really beautiful. Yeah. It was really cool. It was really cool. Um, and you know, and, and the, the coolest part was that he had input on like what we did. Cause I was like, I don't really, I want to do something about, you know, do some kind of ceremony with my binder, but I'm not quite sure what, and, um, you know, it, it, it was just kind of this, like, not, not a lot of back and forth, but there was, there was some input and I really appreciated it. And it's, it's just been really cool to have his support and the support from the fandom because I don't have a very supportive uh, biological family. So being able to have that with the Supernatural fandom has been honestly a lifeline. Um, and being able to grow with it as the climate has shifted for trans people, it's just been, it's been incredible and I just can't believe how amazing it has been so I'm very thankful for it and for all the opportunities that have come from that well I love your chapter thank you for sticking with it even when you had yes. to work on it when you came home from a really <laughs> work I think it, it turned out beautifully so thank you so much thank you um Kim, do you want to ask Melissa a little bit about her photo contribution? Because my phone is blowing up and I want to check it just in case it's somebody who can't get on for some reason. Okay. Hey, I also want to let you know that Joelle had to leave. She had a work emergency. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, hey, Melissa, talk to us about your photo. I think, do you have two photos in the book or is it, just, is it one? I can't remember. It's just the one of Carrie of Carrie? Yeah. Tell us about that. Actually, uh, Lynn had messaged me on Twitter saying that Carrie specifically requested that th this photo be used in a book. And I was shocked because I never like really think of my photography as being good enough to be like published or people wanting to see it. So it was kind of cool. I guess like as a creator, you know, like you don't always feel like you are good enough or like your work is not as good as the next person so it, it was like kind of like a it was a surprise to to me that Carrie specifically said you know like can we use this specific picture so and it's actually one of my favorite pictures that I've taken I really like taking pictures of people when like they're laughing or smiling because I feel like it's very candid and very like personal so those are my favorite kind of pictures to take so I always like when I can capture it and kind of get into that moment but yeah so I'm very I'm very excited to be a part of the book and I'm excited um and like I feel honored to be asked to be a part of it because I feel like I'm amongst like way better <laughs> way better and more talented people than me so we obviously love your picture and that's why it's included so thank you <laughs> again yes, thank you everybody photo. who made the book so pretty um let me just for the sake of the stream and to tell you guys here. So one of the things blowing up my phone was Tom O'Penniket, who was really hoping to be able to join us today, but he is out in the woods in the wilds and the Wi-Fi is not working well. So he wasn't able to join us, but he did want me to say something that I didn't leave up on my phone, which is, um, my deepest gratitude for being included in the book. Let the fans know that I'm always so touched by their tremendous support and that the SBN family is next to none, wishing everyone health and safety during these challenging times. So that is a message from Tom O'Penniket who played Gadriel. Thank you, 
Tamo. We, we miss you, but we appreciate your message. That was really nice. Okay. So moving on, next up on the list is Tedra. Tedra, do you want to talk a little bit about your chapter? Yeah, I feel like it also evolved a lot. This is a very different book from when we first talked. And when we first talked, it was more character centered, I think, as I recall. Um, so I wanted to start with um, some of the characters that really stuck with me, even if they were not in very many episodes. Um, like uh, Hugo Ateo and Lee Rumor in the Chitters episode. I thought that um, it was really fascinating over all of the years to watch the evolution of gay characters on Supernatural, the way they were written, the way they were portrayed. And I really enjoyed seeing um, how they portrayed them in that episode and uh, how much of a regular part of the family they were, which meant a lot to me. They weren't uh, deviant, they weren't, uh, suspect, they were accepted right away. And from there, it just, um, I, I had to also write about some of the places that the show has taken me, um, places I never ever thought I'd go, uh, people that are essential to my life that I never would have met otherwise. And uh, I mean, you, Lynn, <laughs> and a lot of others, and the just incredible array of talent and creativity and compassion. I never thought that a group of strangers, a whole fandom, including the actors and the people that portray these characters that we love, I never thought that um, they could be so welcoming, so much like a family. And it's said all the time, but it really is true. Uh, the willingness for the actors to reach out to the fans to respond, just to have a conversation with them. Um, so it's it's more than just somebody that you admire, that when you admire their work, um, they really become more than that. And it is something personally, <laughs> at this point in my life, I never ever expected to have happen, but it was a wonderful surprise. And it's been uh, 15 years of wonderful surprises. And I have to give you a lot of credit because I know for a fact that making the insides of the book is a much more difficult process than making the outsides. Because that's what I do in my professional life. I make, I make books, I'm a book binder. And um, thank you very much for including me in this. It was a very thought provoking experience. <laughs> I, I love that your chapter really shows the impact that one episode or one or two particular characters can have on some individual person like it your chapter really by using specific examples shows why media is so important and why this show has been so incredibly impactful on so many people so i i really appreciate you sharing that thank you oh thank you <laughs> um let's see who is next up on the list it is sarah sarah can you talk a little bit about your chapter sarah and i got to do a live stream together with Alana a little while ago. Now we get to do this again. So yay. Um, it was a lot of fun writing it. Um, I ended up staying up to about three, four in the morning because every time I would get ready to go to bed, it was like, oh, I need to add this or I got to write this down. Um, but it was actually, I found out about the book through um, a live stream on Alana's um, channel when you, Shelly, and her were doing it for the the nerdy book club and you're actually doing the um family don't end on blood book and you had mentioned this and i was like oh it was, it was like gotta try for that um and it kind of just took off from there um but there's that's the thing there's no second guessing about it there was no like should i actually write this should i put that in there or um like how much do i want to say about it um it was just no second guessing it felt safe and it was very like to know because I've never really known a fandom that's been anything like this um from any previous ones that I've uh, always I've watched um so that was really good just to see for the for that and your chapter also, I mean, shows the impact that a character can have, you know, the impact that the character of Charlie had on your life. Then there are, there are so many examples of characters in this show 
that have just been so tremendously personally important to people. So I, I it's interesting to me because most of you, I, you know, some of you, I kind of knew what you were going to write about. And we sort of collaboratively talked about what you would write about. But many of you, I didn't know what you were going to write about. You were just going to write your personal story. And yet the stories really mesh together to provide exemplars of why the show is so important. And I, I love that. I think yours goes right into that. Thank you. Thank you. I love, I love having it. Um, who is next? Oh, Michael. Can you talk a little bit about the process of writing your chapter? You were also working really, really, <laughs> really hard and a lot. And I was the person being like, hello, hello. Do you have yeah, a yeah. chapter? So mm -hmm. what was what was that process like writing your chapter? Um, it was a little difficult for me because I mean, I'm just like, a, I just make gifts of Supernatural. I'm not really a writer. So it was really difficult for me to know what to write about at first, but I knew in the beginning, I really wanted to write about my story with Supernatural personally, because I know a lot of people here um, have a strong relationship with Supernatural with finding friends and a second family. But I know I had a really significant story with Supernatural through school. And then that's something not a lot of people knew. So that's something I wanted to write about because I've never really talked about it with anybody. And so for me, when I was starting school, I was very like not confident in myself. I was very dependent on other people. I didn't really know who I was, but I just felt confident that other people believed in me, not really believing in myself. And so when I was, when I first found Supernatural, I saw Sam and Dean and they were kind of in control of their lives at first, but then it was kind of eventually throughout the story, their lives kind of fell apart and things were out of control. And so kind of almost mimicking with, for me what I was feeling when I started to feel I was starting to unravel during school. And I was able to relate to them so much and then I saw them then become characters of themselves, men, of, men that who were confident in themselves and believed in themselves rather than other, others believing in them. And that kind of was the kind of turning point for me in school and kind of the big aha moment for me. And that's kind of what I wanted to write my story about. I, I, your story is like super inspiring because yeah. it, it does kind of follow your own sort of struggles and kind of looking to your favorite characters in your favorite show as a way to understand and kind of traverse your own struggle. So it, yours has a very happy ending to it, which I love. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm very grateful for the fandom, the show, and both Sam and Dean. They're yeah. great. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, let me switch gears a little bit. Hansi, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, you're someone who I have worked with on multiple fanish projects. So <laughs> it's so cool to have you as, as part of this one. You contributed a, a nice photo of Todd. Um, do you want to talk about Thank where you. that photo came from? Um, we were shooting um, in California. You were producing and we were shooting in California uh, for um, Squee, which was one of our early projects. and. I just, you know, although you're only using the one photograph, I just want to say how much Supernatural has pushed my career. Um, you know, there was Squee 1 and Squee 2, and then I, you know, had the nerve to do the Joe Bob Briggs, and now All Hail the Popcorn King is, you know, people are interested in distribution. And uh, I, I don't know if I would have had the confidence without us doing Squee together. Thank you. I love that. I absolutely love, and I'm, you know, so so many people are doing so many exciting things. You know, that's another nice thing about fandom and the fanish community is that I think it provides so much support that it gives us all courage to do things in terms of creativity that we wouldn't have had the courage to do otherwise. And I can see so, so many much support. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. I mean, from the people I've met online at supernatural conventions <laughs> or other conventions like we did, or to you know vendors who were selling supernatural you know merch, and I started chatting to them, and then they became my merch person. And it it's um it is a family, you know, and I think that's truly unique. And I think you really capture that in the book. Congratulations, sweetheart. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm glad you're along for the ride once again. <laughs> yes. And if you do another book, I would love to write a chapter. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, and you can too, for sure. Thank you yeah. so much. Thanks, honey. Uh, let's see. 
Is Dawn Gray not here? I hope she didn't have technical difficulties, but I guess she's not here. I'm just going down the list here so that I don't miss anyone. So, all right, well, we'll get, we'll get back to Dawn. Um, Tara, do you wanna talk a little bit about your chapter? Sure, um, I'm actually um, a newcomer to Supernatural compared to a lot of you, I think. Um, I didn't even know this show existed three years ago and somehow I got sucked into this vortex that <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's uh, the supernatural family has become a, a really important part of my work. Actually, um, I I was on medical leave in the fall of 2017 and started watching this show that Netflix um, suggested and watched 13 seasons in about six weeks. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you people who watched it you know, one week at a time managed that. I, I would have been very sad to have to wait that long. Um, <laughs> but at, after I was done watching the first 13 seasons, I'm like, man, there's there's something in this. And and my poor husband, I'm like, I think I have to watch that again. <laughs> Meanwhile, while I was trying to watch the whole series again, I started digging into... Um, the, the world around it, which is, you know, the SPM family, and was just fascinated by uh, just this, this magical realm of kindness and activism and support. And um, it, it just kind of blew my mind, especially at a time when I was feeling so, so vulnerable because I was really sick. Um, so I decided, well, there, I have to do something there's something really, really powerful here. And um, I'm a professor, a leadership professor, and we have a lot of veterans in our um, program. And I was like, you know, I think this would be a really great vehicle for them because they don't have um, a, a lot of space to talk really authentically about, uh, about their world. Um, the academy isn't always um, understanding of, you know, the military complex in that world. It's not um, necessarily uh, something that they're always comfortable talking about in class. And I really wanted to create a space where men could talk about being men in this world, particularly post-combat, post-trauma, um, and then how they move into leadership roles with all those experiences. So um, I built that. I, I literally studied supernatural for two years. I mean, you know, it's not like just an academic thing. I really like the show and all that too. I was like, oh yeah, I get to make this my work. Um, <laughs> but um, but I, I just became fascinated by not only the show and the stories that that it could tell, but also the actors and and the leadership roles that they took and how important that was. And then that fandom itself and all the really, really powerful um, work that had been done by the fandom. In fact, actually, it's kind of funny because I actually came across the family before I knew what the family was. I um, work in South Africa about a month a year and Gish had actually um, chosen one of the organizations I work with as a beneficiary of a large gift project. It really oh my saved, God. <laughs> yeah, saved the organization in Zolani, South Africa. Um, so I know, you know, kids who had directly benefited from that. So it was really funny to then put those two things together, you know, my 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 African work and my and my supernatural work. And I'm like, whoa, the connections are amazing. Um, but what I found was when I started building this, I, I knew that I had a really powerful vehicle. And when I taught the class for the first time last summer, I was blown away by how powerful it was. Um, you know, uh, people very quickly started talking about things that were very personal in class. And this isn't, you know, this is leadership. It's not like psychology, or counseling, or um, an area where you might expect people to be um, that open about trauma and things like that. Um, and, and, and so I knew I had something. And when Lynn asked me to write a chapter about this experience, I asked the students, 
I said, hey, can you, um, can you share with me, you know, your experience in the class? And what they wrote was really incredible. Um, and, and it was really, it was really gratifying to see how well, I knew the course was, you know, worked, but did it get at that really, you know, sort of essential elemental um, part of them that I was trying to, to support um, through this work. And it did, um, you know, Lynn met um, at, in New Jersey last fall, met this, you know, grizzled tattooed, you know, combat soldier who is just giddy to be at the supernatural <laughs> convention. He was, it was, we had a great dinner where we could all <laughs> be fanished together and he might not yeah. look like the stereotypical fan, but he was yeah. just as fanished as any of us. Hardcore. Yeah. So, um, you know, from, from people like that to, um, I just, um, I got a 13 year old um, young woman addicted to supernatural shout out Tava Jenkins, who's watching right now. Um, and, and the show's reach is just so incredible. I mean, there's there, I mean, I'm not telling you guys anything new, but um, I, I became addicted very quickly through the power of the whole world. Yeah. I, I love your chapter because it brings in a, a group of people who we don't necessarily think of as the stereotypical supernatural fans, veterans, but it, yeah. it is, is so relevant for them and your chapter really brought that out. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I want to, I want to be uh, sensitive to spring and Robin, we're, we're coming up on our two hours. We've still got about four more people to go. Um, but you just let me know if you need to tap out because you've been working your butts off for two solid hours. So please don't think that you, you know, if you're exhausted, please just let us know. I'm going to keep on going, but just, I just wanted to be explicit to let you know that. Um, so Gail, you're up next. Do you want to talk a little bit about, I'm a fan of your writing. So now I've got your writing in my book. So that's cool. And, and I am absolutely thrilled to have a chance to be part of this book. Um, I, you know how thrilled I am. I've been fangirling all over it. So I'm, I'm really, really thrilled. Um, so I'm, I'm Gail Z. Martin. I write epic and urban fantasy novels for a living. That, that's my life. So I'm pretty much immersed in fandom um, as part of what I do. And I've been part of fandom since I was a teenager. I talk in my chapter about how one show that I discovered as a teenager, um, becoming a fan of it saved my life and set me on the road to what I do for a living now. And then many, many years later, Supernatural opened up all kinds of new possibilities for me and helped me lay to rest uh, one of my own personal demons that I hadn't even realized was still dogging me. So I, I owe that debt to it. Um, and it's interesting because even though I'm immersed in fandom as part of the business side of writing, and I'm at places like New York Comic Con and, and Dragon Con, it had been a very long time since I had actually fangirled over something. Uh, I, I Yes, there were shows and movies and books that I loved, but nothing for a long time that had just kind of grabbed me by the throat and refused to let go of me and just became almost an obsession. And then there was Supernatural. And I came late to the party and I tell the story about coming in halfway through season 11, binge watching 11 seasons in four months as one does so that I could <laughs> by the beginning of chapter 12 which is when I started live tweeting the show and that's how I met Lynn and, and many other fans and then started going to conventions. And one of the other things that came out of this, besides just recapturing that lost fangirl giddiness and immersion and joy that comes from being an all in unabashed fangirl was, uh, it also opened up so many new things for me that I had never considered doing before. So when season 11 went on hiatus, I, that was just intolerable. And I went back to doing something that I hadn't done in many, many years, which was reading fan fiction and totally went down that rabbit hole and then started reading Slash 
and went down that rabbit hole and then said, gee, I wonder what the published non-fandom uh, versions of this look like. And then I went down that rabbit hole and said, okay, this is way too much fun. I got to start doing this for myself, which opened up my entire career as Morgan Bryce, where I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal romance, and it hit the bestseller list. So it, it's an opportunity, a chance that I would never have perhaps found if it wasn't for loving Supernatural enough to take a big risk. And so it, it gave me all those things and a very wonderful found family because one of the things I love the most about what I do is that fandom is, is part of it. And it, it, I'm immersed in fandom all the time. And my fandom family means so much to me. And Supernatural has given me a wonderful, vibrant, amazing fandom family and so many new friends. And has just really, over the course of just four or five years, changed so much for me. And I am so grateful to the show and to the, the SPN family and folks like Lynn. And I'm just really thrilled to be, uh, be able to be here with everybody. I love that this show has had such an impact in so many different ways, but such an impact on so many people. Thank you so much. I love having your chapter in the book. You Thanks. also pulled it together very quickly. So thank <laughs> you for that. Um, I'm saving my couple of academic types for the end because I know that you're comfortable with that. And I know you can you can do that because you're in the same, do the same thing that I do. Um, April, you want to talk a little bit about your chapter? Sure. Um, I think mine was a little different because I actually wrote it um, two years ago after my first convention. I was still really new to the fandom and you were the first person I had met that was also kind of an academic. I was kind of hiding the fangirl side because I was supposed to be a, a grown up and a professional and a mother and all those things. So I had this big experience and I really wanted to share it. So I wrote it all down and sent it to you. I still really don't know why I did that. And you said that you would be happy to include it in a book if you wrote another one. I'm not sure I believed you, but here we are. Um, <laughs> I was not kidding. <laughs> no, you weren't. So I'm, in December, I think I got something from you asking to edit it a little bit. And it was hard not to kind of change the whole thing because there's so much more that has happened in the last two years. But I really wanted it to be what it was two weeks after my first convention when I was still trying to process that a television show could have that kind of impact or that you could meet these kind of people and become that close that quickly and have that kind of support group that was all still very new and I didn't want to lose that part of the story in updating it, so. Yeah, I, I think that was, we did like talk about that and I so think it was the right answer because it does come through as sort of like a first person like in the moment experience. And, and I also love that it touches on one of the other things, one of the other ways in which this whole experience has been powerful for people, which is through like music at the conventions, because you write about Rob Benedict and Loudon Swain and how they had such an impact on your life in such a, an amazing personal way. So I love that it goes into that. Yeah, yeah they, um, they really did. And that's really was, um, kind of the catalyst for a lot of other changes further along as we went. It was definitely something that wasn't expected. And the music from the show was kind of the same thing. That was one of the things that pulled me into the show to begin with was the classic rock music. Yeah, I love, I love that. I, we couldn't have a book about Supernatural without touching on music because that would just be very wrong. So thank you, I love your chapter. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, we just have a couple more. Allison, you want to talk a little bit about your chapter? Sure. Hi, Lynn. Hi. It's, I'm, I'm just honored to be part of the book. Um, I think I wrote mine shortly after I had reviewed the first one. And, um, well, mine's about the, the experience of being in retail. And we all know how fun that can be if bless all the essential workers working retail i'm doubly essential i work library and uh group home so i work a lot 
Um, but my chapter is just about getting that experience of going from retail to grad school where I'm at now. And um, it's kind of one of those shocking things that the show could do something like that. Um, because before I found the show, I was just kind of whole humming it, just kind of blah, doing the thing, going to work, going home, not really doing much. And um, so, you know, I, I cover that in, in the chapter and um, I don't think I would be doing what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for this show, both professionally with working in a group home, uh, potentially, and being in grad school. But also, I think Gail and I should probably get to know one another because I'm writing a book on fan fiction itself. Leave me alone with the text long enough. I'll prove that you anything's fan fiction. I don't <laughs> care what it is. It's what I do. Um, and I, I love that your chapter also, much like Amy's, is kind of how the show and the fandom can be such a spark for making a decision that's really scary to do something that, you know, maybe a lot of people would be like, are you crazy? No, you can't leave that job to go do, you know, go to grad school or to decide you want to be a writer instead of this great job. Like, it's it's extraordinary that the show can do well, that. Well, technically the job left me. <laughs> That's true, but you still didn't go back to that. You went, you moved forward and, and dared to do something that you wanted to do. And I, I love that story. Because, you know, private equity killed the store. <laughs> yes, this is, this is true. That's the reality. I love your chapter. Thank you so much for including it. I'm just glad to be a part of it. Um, let's see. Oh, we are up to Tanya and Kayla. I, I, your chapter, I think, brings in something that's so important in the book, because also we couldn't talk about Supernatural and the SPN family without talking about all the good that the show and the fandom does in the world. There's a reason this book benefits Random Acts and SPN survivors, because we all think that's really important. And that's kind of what your chapter touches on. You want to say a little bit about your chapter? Yeah, thank you so much. First of all, I think um, like many of you, I you Lynn had sort of hinted at another book um, on Alana's uh, channel, and I I opened my laptop and and I think I sent you an obnoxious number of proposed um, ideas. There were, there <laughs> were quite a few, yeah. Very enthusiastic um, <laughs> thinking on paper, um, but yeah, Kayla and I for the past four years have been looking at fandom-based activism and it all started with Supernatural. Um, I kind of got into this like many of you really fell head first into the fandom and was fortunate enough to somehow get Misha's attention in a really weird way. And the study um, abstract was retweeted and that's how Kayla and I found each other. But our work is about kind of why and how fans um, come together in groups and experience this emotional energy. And then they take that passion and they put it into um, charity work, nonprofits. And we are making the argument that this is looking like uh, social movements from an academic uh, perspective. So for Supernatural, we wanted to explore gender and activism and the, the legacy as we see it of Supernatural, which is that you know empowered, um, largely female identified uh, fan base. And uh, so we, we wrote about that. And when we say activism, we mean both fans active, um, organizing and advocating for what they wanna see on the show, such as better gender representation, more people of color, more queer inclusive storylines as a lot of you have um, talked about and also doing those good works and taking that out into their community. So it's it's such an honor to be a part of this. Thank you so much and to be hear all of your uh, stories. It's just, I'm just, you know, blown away that I started watching something on Netflix to make, see if it was appropriate for my 12 year old. It wasn't um, and now I'm here. <laughs> You never know when a television show is gonna change the trajectory of your life, for sure. Kayla, you wanna say a few words about your contribution? Yeah, I'm, I think that one of the things that was really wonderful and unique about this was the opportunity to weave in the personal stories that we have with that piece on activism that we're talking about. I know for myself, I wrote about how I found the show while I was struggling to get an internship in my graduate school program. And I was reflecting on that as I was thinking about what I was going to say. And 
I realized that I actually just accepted a training director position for a, an internship, an assistant training director position for an internship. And so it's, I think like many people have spoken about just an amazingly powerful show that allows us to do so, so much and seeing the many, many different pieces of social movements that have popped up has been really incredible and really, really great to write about. Yeah, well, I, I love that you did because I really feel like that you can't remember Supernatural with it and, and why it's so special without remembering that that is a big, important part of why it has been so special. So thank you so much for writing that so eloquently. With them, I had to, my editing consisted of, nope, it's still too academic. Nope, it's still too academic. Nope, it's still too academic. So. <laughs> and we were like, you must have footnotes. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> and I'm even reading it and going, oh, I, I could have, I could have cut out some of these words. So, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you. So, so that, I think we've heard from everyone, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but before we end, I would just like to put my co-hosts on the spot a little bit. Alana, could oh, you yeah. talk a little bit about writing your chapter? And Kim, could you talk a little bit about pulling together and contributing many photos? Um, well, I'll start by passing that buck and I'm um, throwing it to you, Lynn. Do we have some winners that we could announce? Oh, yes. While you're talking, I'm going to go figure that out. I'll be back. <laughs> do I really? Alana, do you want to go? Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Alana. All right. Um, so my chapter, I kind of just focused on, you know, I started Supernatural when I was a, a junior, uh, watching Supernatural when I was a junior in high school. And uh, that was like the summer between, between my junior and senior year. And it was honestly, high school was one of the roughest periods of my life. But those two years in particular were just pretty awful for various reasons. And Supernatural really helped me get through it. And then it helped me you know, in my move from high school to college, I, I went to college in Chicago in a city where I, I didn't really know anyone. And so Supernatural kind of held my hand throughout all of that. And then I also talked about um, how Jared's chapter in Family Don't End With Blood helped me come to terms with uh, some of the struggles I was dealing with in terms of my mental health. And so I talked about that as well uh, and kind of just coming to terms with all of that. So. Yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. It was a great chapter, Alana. I I, I really got a lot out of it. I, f I feel like I know you a little better now. Thanks. I feel like everybody who wrote a chapter got let themselves be amazingly vulnerable and really write about their very personal journey. And that's why all the chapters in the book, both chapters written by fans and chapters written by actors, because they are full of that vulnerability, they are really inspiring. And Alana, yours is really inspiring. So thank you. Thank you. Kim, you wanna take us home? Do, do, do you have info about those winners? Yes, so I'll let me- i in this buck as long as I possibly can. <laughs> you also are the one who's always keeping me organized. That is no lie, so thank you. Yes, so I wanted to announce, so the publisher had a contest where uh, people could win a signed copy of Family Don't End With Blood signed by most of the Supernatural cast. And so I'm gonna announce the winners who will be getting a copy of that book. And they are Francis Brown and Deborah Myrek. So congratulations, Francis, and congratulations, Deborah. And I'm gonna get your books out to you very soon. Yay. Okay, Kim, it's really you now. This is the oh. end of all you. Okay, well, uh, when Lynn was talking about writing this next book and we started talking about how do we want it to look? And obviously we have this beautiful cover art from our friend, Chris. She also did the cover art for Family Don't Know With Blood. And she put together just this amazing cover for this book. Shout out to her for that. Um, and we loved Chris's art. And so we thought maybe it would be a great idea to include some art by some fan artists. Sherry, I love your work. It is amazing. 
Um, and, and we also I, have we also have art by Mary Twist, who could not be with us tonight, but her art is also amazing. Yes, and I loved what Sherry and Mary submitted for this. Um, as as all of the art and the photography, the photos came in. I had the daunting task of saying, "Yes, we really like this. We really want to use this. I'm not sure. We'll put this one on the back burner." Um, and with the photos, I reached out to, to photographers, Lynn reached out to photographers. We started pulling in all of those photos. And again, we had that daunting task of deciding what was gonna go in, where was it gonna go? Um, I had my favorites, Lynn had her favorites. We didn't fight, we may have disagreed. Ultimately, I think we got in all of the photos that we both really wanted to be in there. Um, and that's kind of really it. It was about two weeks, three weeks, I think, of just nonstop back and forth and looking at, I don't know, 200 photos, 300 photos, something like that, trying to decide what we were gonna put in there, so. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a daunting task, but it was also really fun to look at all those beautiful photos. I mean, what a tough job, right? Yes, and shout out to Krista who couldn't be with us. She also has some absolutely amazing, wonderful photos in this book. So thank you, Krista, we really appreciate that. Yes, shout out to all the people, all the contributors who couldn't be with us. We appreciate all of you. I appreciate everybody who's here and how hard you worked. Um, special shout out to Spring and Robin for sticking with us this entire time and doing a bang up job. Thank you so much. Um, I know Spring is a longtime SPN family member herself and Robin is SPN family adjacent, I think is what you said. So I hope, I hope this was uh, interesting for you, but I also know you worked your butt off. So thank you everybody who's here. Thank you for coming tonight. I hope that this is, feels like a celebration for you guys. We are so proud of what everybody did. This book belongs to all of you and I thank you all for your part in it. And with that, Alana, do you want to close it out? Because this is your YouTube stream. Sure. I guess I'll just reiterate what Lynn said. Thank you to everyone who watched. Thank you to all the contributors who joined in, to our lovely interpreters, um, and to all the other contributors who, who couldn't make it. I also wanted to mention um, Rick Worthy was supposed to tune in tonight with us. Uh, and unfortunately, he is in the UK right now, so it got a little late. Um, but we are sending him love. Um, so thank you to everyone for tuning in and check out the book, it's in the description. Check out everyone who's here because they're all awesome. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.